I Have This Old Gun is presented by the official rare coin and bullion dealer of the National Rifle Association, Universal Coin and Bullion. Before the Browning machine gun, the gun that we know today as the Potato Digger, is the Model 1895. There were no gas-operated machine guns. This is the product of John Browning's very fertile mind, harnessing the power of a cartridge to make the gun operate. John Browning may not have invented the machine gun, but he certainly improved it. Uh, his development in 1895 of what is known as the uh, Potato Digger, or the first gas-operated uh, full automatic gun in the world, certainly changed the, uh, the face of, of firearms technology as well as military history throughout the world. He had discovered that enough gas comes out at high velocity to cause an impact uh, that, will, that is sufficient to give the operating parts of the gun a good solid slap, impart momentum, and send them into an operating cycle. When he was satisfied with the invention, he took it to Colts and said, I have a, I've designed a new machine gun. They were interested and they began producing it as the Model 1895. The first use of these in combat was at Guantanamo Bay when the Marine Battalion, Huntington's Battalion, went there and established Camp McCalla and they had two of the guns uh, two more guns were landed off the USS Texas that came out of its armory. The Marines used these guns at the Battle of Cusco Wells, and then, of course, later they were using these guns in Samoa, uh, where several Marines got the Medal of Honor for saving the gun uh, when it was overrun by Samoan uh, natives under German NCOs. Um, and then the next year, it proved to be one of the mainstays of the defense of the legations in what's now Beijing, at that time called Peking, during the famous 55-day long siege. After that time, the Marine Corps used them throughout the small landings uh, around the world. Uh, its next big service came in 1912 when Marines used it in the first Nicaraguan campaign. The potato digger was chambered in six different calibers. Six millimeter Lee Navy, seven by 57, 303 British, 3040 government, also 3040 Krag, 7.62 by 54 R, and then ultimately in 30 caliber. The fact that John Browning could envision one design that could support all of those different calibers is really quite noteworthy because it, it testifies to the genius of that man and the incredible mechanical skill that was a daily reality of his mind. But by 1914, uh, the Colt Company was uh, giving up on manufacturing these. However, they already had uh, orders from both the Italian Navy and from the Russians. The guns were uh, taken over to France. Uh, some were used in the battles around the Belgian city of Ypres, but a number of the other battalions used them until eventually they were all re replaced with the British Vickers. The M1895 Potato Digger brought the United States into the era of the machine gun. It's the product of the genius of John Moses Browning himself, the man that brought us so many extremely well-designed firearms. Although it was never adopted as a standard machine gun, it nevertheless fought for the American military on a few occasions. M1895 Potato Diggers accompanied American forces to Cuba in 1898 during the Spanish-American War. And then also, a pair of M1895 Potato Digger machine guns accompanied the U.S. Volunteer Cavalry when it went to Cuba, the famous Rough Riders. It became known as the Potato Digger because there was an operating arm up under the uh, barrel that would swing down with every shot. 
And it was found that when, it, when the gun was sitting on a tripod in fairly soft earth, the legs of the tripod would start sinking into the soil. And eventually the gun would settle down in to the point where when the operating arm uh, was actuated with every shot, it would dig into the dirt and send a, a spray of dirt flying. And so the soldiers, I think, probably were the ones who first named it the potato digger. While it's being used in World War I by the Russians, uh, much later by the famed Czech Legion, and by the Italians, the Canadians, uh, back in the Western Hemisphere, Marines are using it in Veracruz in 1914, and then again in Haiti in 1915, but the most famous action was the Battle of Guayacanas in June of 1916 when Marines were again called into one of the Caribbean countries to pacify problems going on there. And on the march, they met uh, one of the rebel armies at uh, the Battle of Guayacanas. And the Marines brought up their model 1909 Bene Mercy machine rifles and laid down a barrage, and several of the gunners were wounded. Um, a lot of the guns were jamming. And at that time, First Sergeant Roswell Winans, who was in charge of all these machine guns, brings a Colt gun up into battery on the wheeled mount, starts firing it. Unfortunately, it jams also. And he stands up in full view of the enemy, taking the time to clear the jam, get the gun back in action, and for his exploits that day, he was awarded the Medal of Honor. You had basically two choices in that time period when you were making a bell-fed machine gun, and that is, did you cool it with air or did you cool it with water? John Browning chose to make a gas-operated air-cooled design that was a relatively e effective and successful design. So it's a weapon that's more than just passingly notable. It's a weapon that, of course, introduces the United States to the era of the machine gun. It's a weapon that's used in the interwar period. It's a weapon that's then used in the trenches of the First World War. And it's a weapon that continues to live on into the 1920s. It's a weapon that went up San Juan Hill with the Rough Riders. That makes it something inextricably a part of American history. I have this old gun brought to you by Universal Coin and Bullion, the official rare coin and bullion dealer of the National Rifle Association. Visit us online for other I Have This Old Gun videos at AmericanRifleman.org.